Oh, ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, welcome to episode 255 of the Spearhead Sundays podcast. I'm your host, Lewis Spears. Welcome back. We're at it again uh, where we've returned. Uh, quick few notes. I'm going to be in Adelaide. Uh, actually, you've missed the show. I hope you enjoyed it. <laughs> that was my final show. I'm going to be in Melbourne, though. No? No? No. no. no? Adelaide's next week. And next week? Oh, <laughs> dude, you haven't missed it. False alarm. Lewspears.com. Get your tickets to Adelaide. Also, Melbourne, December 22nd. It's the Lukies, the Luke and Lewis Award Show. Those are on sale. And we're also live streaming that event on the Luke and Lewis channel. Uh, that's cool. Uh, my records uh, have been sent to me. Finally. They're pressed. They're on their way to me. I think they're arriving today. So they'll be shipped out to you guys over the next few days if you've bought them. If you didn't buy them, tough luck. They're not coming back. Oh, they might. I don't know. Who knows? Guys, <laughs> look. The point I'm trying to make today is, uh, is look, the world may be over again. Omi- Omicron is back. Is it Omicron or is it Omnicron? Omicron. Omicron. Like the, uh, like the Futurama planet. Yeah, that's right. The Futurama planet. Omnicron. Om- Omnicron. Man, what if they wanted us to be scared of this virus, why did they have to give it such a cool name? Yeah. Omnicron. I kind of want it. I want Omnicron. I want to get it just so I can say, welcome. I'm Lewis Spears, Omnicron edition. I want. Th- it sounds like an upgrade. It sounds like, dude, you get, did you get the new Omnicron? He's like, man, yeah, I got it installed the other day. It actually made me faster, stronger, smarter, and increased my penis size. <laughs> I want it. I honestly, I want it. I want to get it. I want to feel it. I want to walk around and give it to everyone else. All the other ones, Delta, Boo, OG COVID, you don't want that stuff. I mean, apparently there's also been a bunch of other variants that just haven't made the news, which is got to feel bad for that variant, you know? Like imagine going into all of the effort to mutate and you don't even make front lines, you don't even, you don't even make the headlines. Like, that's, that's got to feel bad. All of the other variants must be looking at Delta like, oh, look at Delta. Like, fair enough. Obviously, OG COVID, I feel like all the mutations must pay homage to OG. Like, they paved the way. They shut down the world. They ruined Lewis's tour. They should get the most respect. But then Delta comes along and starts acting like they're top shit. Why? Because they were the, the first mutation. They were the first mutation to, to, to make people be kind of racist. You know, the the Indian strain, just because they were they were the first big mutation, they get all the press, boo. But now Omnicron comes out and is just absolutely replacing it. Like if if OG COVID was radio, Delta is TV. And video killed the radio star, but you know what killed TV? Internet, Omnicron, the World Wide Web. And that's what this thing is. It's going worldwide. It's going to be world famous. And I think that I'm getting flashbacks to 2020 and 2021. I'm seeing the same shit and it's freaking me out. And I'm really trying to stay positive And I hope you guys are too. I'm really trying to stay positive. On Look, the bad thing about this thing is it's much more contagious and all of the borders are shutting. International travel is shutting again. But on the plus side, we have something that we didn't have, right? If you want to stay positive about this thing, it's very easy to stay anxious about it and it's very easy to stay worried about it. But we have something that we didn't have in 2020. I'm talking about Australia. We didn't have this in 2020. We didn't have it in in the start of 2021 either when Delta came around. What we have now is not (laughs) vaccines. I'm talking about tradies in the streets. That's what we really have. So if you're worried about a lockdown, look, sometimes it might feel like a bit of a bad thing to align yourselves with dudes smashing up cop stars, <laughs> cop cars, and, and holding up the swastika signs. But if you really want to go to a music festival, sometimes the enemy of my enemy is my friend. <laughs> um, so look, I think that I, I actually think that they can't lock us down. Because I just think, especially Melbourne, you know what really sucks is seeing all of the people uh, in other countries go, oh, look, it's 2020 all over again. And then I go, for us, it's like, what, three weeks ago all over again. Mm. When did we get out of lockdown? Like three, four weeks ago? Great. And it's starting again. But I do honestly think, especially for Melbourne, I don't know about the other states, especially for Melbourne, if they tried to put us in a lockdown, there'd just be blood in the streets. I really think that. So I don't think we're going back in. And also, it's looking like 
this thing is just less dangerous from what I've read anyway. It looks like it's way more contagious, but it's way less dangerous. So what that means from what I've read, it's actually, if you get a strain that's less dangerous, but more contagious, you actually want to spread that because then it will kill Delta and OG and everyone will just get the mild version. And then it almost acts like a booster shot. Is that like chicken pox? Like yeah. having parties of getting everyone sick at the same time? Yeah, exactly. Like you want chicken pox when you're younger because it's, uh, you know, mostly harmless. If you get it older, that's when it's really dangerous. Mm. So maybe, you know, obviously this, I'm not a fucking scientist and even the scientists don't even know what's going on yet. Maybe this is actually a really good thing. What is very interesting, though, is is uh, all of the, these people like talking about vaccine passports going, this is, proves that vaccine passports don't work because obviously the thing has travelled overseas, but the only people who can travel overseas are vaccinated people. That's an interesting point. But it's also like, I don't know, this thing is, I don't know, I'm just so fucking over it. I just, I just really, I'm, I'm so over COVID news that I just kind of want to be one of those freaks that thinks it's not real. You know, I feel like it's life is more, life is easier when you just go, oh, that's not real. Why do my lungs hurt? <laughs> you know, life seems simpler and shorter for those people. Um, so look, I don't think it shuts us down. The only thing that I am worried about for Australia is capacity limits. There won't be another lockdown. I don't think that's happening. I don't think they'll be able to do that anyway. But if one thing comes back, it is capacity limits because they'll be like, all right, all right, all right. Fine, we're not going to lock you down, but we will kick the arts industry while they're down, you know? You guys can go out and have fun, but don't make too much money (laughs) while you're at it, you know? Hey, musicians and comedians, you thought it was over? Fuck you. Everyone else gets their industry back, not you. (laughs) They spit on the rotting corpse of art in Australia. Um, Hey, remember when uh, when we had two years to to build like uh, purpose built quarantine facilities, and the government was like, yeah, 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 we'll do it. Yeah, yeah, we'll get on that. Yep, no worries. Uh, yep. And now there's a new variant. They're like, oh, maybe we should start that perhaps. But uh, <laughs> here we are. Anyway, I feel kind of I feel positive about it. I think that it is going to be a good year next year. I have to think that. You know, it was a really depressing thing. I. Uh, the Spotify Wrapped thing came out recently. <laughs> Spotify Wrapped, and it, and it, and they show you a version for creators, right? They show a version for creators, and uh, they showed me my Spearhead Sundays version, right? And it showed it showed that one, right? Two very sad things. The first sad thing, right, is I released. Uh, uh, the our audience has grown thirty five percent since last year. Thirty five percent. But our downloads and our streams have decreased. And that's because this year I released 28 episodes of this show, which is just, what, two episodes over half the year? <laughs> so that's like one in two episodes this year I have I have missed. And that is uh, Keelan's fault. Yes. 100%. Uh, who is here? He's here today. He's uh, actually been upgraded. The facilities have been upgraded for Keelan. He has a chair. However, he's still sitting on the floor. So I don't know what he wants. I don't know what this guy wants. I don't have a chair. I have a stool. You have? Look, there's a chair there. That's not a chair. That's a chair. No. It's got a back. It's got wheels. <laughs> what the fuck else am I going to call that? I don't know. You but- have a chair and a stool. You've, <laughs> you've decided to use neither of them. There's fucking, there's a stool over there. There's a chair there too in the corner. There's four chairs. That's, yeah, that's a chair. Well, sit in it. No, I'm good. It's a vibe. Sitting on the floor is a vibe. Yeah. So why would I for the ever? Podcast, why would for the podcast tradition. you're going to sit for tradition for the rest of for the rest of time you, when I do this show you're going to sit on the floor. Yeah. Well, that's that annoys me because how how can I punish a man who sits on the floor? <laughs> I can't take anything from you. Exactly. You're if like I the Joker. This, you if know I when fuck he, up, there's nothing you can steal from me. I know. You're like the Joker. You know when he does that big crime in the movie and then he burns his half of the money. How do I take something away from this man? (laughs) You know what? You're banned from lipstick. (laughs) So that was the first depressing thing. I'd only done 28 episodes of this show, which hopefully next year will change. I mean, what a, what a classic Lewis Spears thing to say. Yeah. Yeah. I'll do more episodes next year. Um, I've heard actually um, next year, something, 
striking has happened that's very different about 2022. Apparently, there's less Sundays in in uh, 2022 than there are in a normal year. Um, but the saddest thing I saw was Spotify was telling me a list of firsts. You did, you achieved a lots of firsts, right? And there was there were a few interesting ones, like you know I got my first listener in Slovenia. Identify yourself, please. Right. You haven't been to Slovenia? Slovenia, I have actually. You've been to Slovenia? Yeah, in 2016. You've never told me. Well, I've been I've been I've done lots of things I haven't told you about. What? I went all Name the, one thing. I went to uh, a country called I don't want to oh, Montenegro. What? <laughs> Montenegro. Yeah. Right. But they pronounce it differently. How do they say it? With a hard R. Knee and then yeah. Right. Yeah. But you can say that. That's how you say it. I don't want to say it. You don't want to say it. No. Say what? <laughs> Montenegro. And yeah. I, I went to Croatia. I went to a few countries. Do you have to call it Monta N word? <laughs> As a white person? Yeah, I went to Monta N word <laughs> when I was 16. <laughs> it was lit. Yeah. Yeah. I've been to Slovenia. I've been to a few countries. What is there to do in Slovenia? Uh, there was uh, an Audi. Dude, this is going to be so <laughs> relatable for the one listener from Slovenia we There's have. There's a fucking. Um, There's an Aldi. An Aldi and there's a massive uh, cave that we went to. An Aldi and a cave. Yeah, and, and then that's it. Why were you in Slovenia? For fun. It uh, doesn't sound like you had much fun. You uh, went to Aldi and a cave. <laughs> no, we didn't go to Aldi. We drove past it. Oh, okay. And then drove past poverty. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, that's a, that's a vibe, isn't it? Like a it lot was, of those countries, it's like, this is fun. Ooh, fuck. I that's believe it sad. was part of the Soviet Union, so... It, not a great, not a great place to be. No, but I did get gelato. Oh yeah, yeah. How was, was that? It was good. Yeah, yeah. That's great. You can't really fuck up gelato, I don't think. No, I don't think so. Yeah. Doesn't that? Yeah, that's not really a a, a mark. You know, it's, <laughs> the Soviet Union was absolutely terrible for for everyone. People died waiting in bread lines, but fuck, you got to try the gelato. <laughs> Like they, there's one thing the Soviet Union nailed. It is gelato, yeah, which is strange for a for a for a union that uh, is mostly associated with with poverty and famine. <laughs> yeah, it's like, but fuck, try the ice cream. Ah, it's cool. Ge- you look, I'll say this: gelato sucks, and it's always sucked, and it's not good. Gelato is just not good ice cream. You haven't had good gelato. Yeah, I have, <laughs> and I'm telling you right now that no one's had good gelato. Because there is no such thing. There's a there's a place called Messina, like a big brand. Yeah. They're great. They are the exception. They're great for gelato, which is a <laughs> universally bad food. Like, I don't understand anyone who, when presented with the choice between ice cream and gelato, would go, <laughs> I'm getting gelato. Hey, why don't you kill yourself instead? That sounds like more fun. Gelato, yeah. it's just, it's shit. It's like, uh, it's not even a good fucking... It's not like, you know, when you get a zoo, it's like a shit Zupa Duper. That's what gelato is. It's like, imagine if we made a Zupa Duper soft and bad. It's yeah. not good. Um, I'm looking at the difference. Uh, Do you like gelato? You're wrong. You're, bo- you're both wrong. Sorbet, man, leave. You can't, don't, don't come in here and be like, I like sorbet. You're oh, wrong. Hang on. The only difference is that milk... Uh, milk is used rather than cream. Yeah. So there's almost no difference. That's wrong. There's a huge difference and it's the taste. Isn't sorbet different to gelato? Yeah, I think so. Sorbet and gelato. I mean, what the fuck are we talking? <laughs> you guys you guys have come, you're ganging up on me and you're losing. Hang on. I mean, I'm, like, yeah, I'm looking it up. I'm looking it up. Don't ever say sorbet. It's a wanky sound. I look sorbet. <laughs> Don't say that. No, you like shit ice cream. What about sherbet? Sherbet. That's <laughs> not even a fucking ice thing. You guys us. You guys have the worst taste. <laughs> gelato is something only enjoyed by girls who think they're different. I like gelato. Shut the fuck up and get chocolate ice cream and admit that's what it is. Get chocolate ice cream. Don't pretend that that's better. This is pretty funny. Yeah. One thing I don't like about gelato, so my girlfriend, her housemate works at Messina, so makes lots of ice or makes lots of gelato rather. Mm, shit ice cream. So yeah. their fridge is full. Their freezer rather is yeah. full of gelato. Yeah. <clears throat> and it freezes and it gets like, you know, like 
shit ice cream. Yeah. It's like frozen. Yes. Yeah. That's what happens to gelato. Exactly. It shouldn't exist. There's an abomination. Right. Okay. It's like some guy tried to make ice cream, but he didn't have milk at the time. So he's like, I'll I'll improvise. Didn't have cream. Whatever. Okay. Look, (laughs) the... This is the this is the fuck thing I'm trying to get, to, <laughs> right? But I got distracted by another fuck thing, Slovenia, and then I got distracted by an even worse thing, an even worse, something even worse <laughs> than a country that's been devastated by the collapse of the Soviet Union <laughs> is gelato, right? That's even worse. But even worse than that is the first episode I uploaded this year was 2021 is going to be completely different. <laughs> You ever think about what you were going to do at the start of this year and just laugh because if you didn't laugh, you'd cry? Mm. That was th- that episode. Although a bit of a bit of uh, prescientness by me, I did include an asterisk in that title. And thank fuck, because otherwise I would have looked like a fool. I included an asterisk in that title and the asterisk was Delta. Right. So I would like to call this episode 2022 is going to be completely different. Three asterisks just in case. Right. I do think it's going to be better. And I and I will say this. Sorbet sucks. What is sorbet? Is that even different from gelato? I don't know. I just thought I thought the word sorbet and sherbet was really funny. Great. I'll, I'll have a look. Sorbet. Or does it really even matter? It does. It matters extremely to me and, and all just, of the listeners of this show. It's just essentially the same thing as ice cream and gelato, but made from water. Yeah, see, it's like that sucks. Like don't like that's basically what you what you're eating is diet ice cream. Flavored water. It's it's fla- it's it's fucking frozen cordial. <laughs> that's what you're eating. It's I mean you might as well go down to seven eleven and get a fucking slushy. That's what it's just like a little yeah. bit less liquid version of a slushy from 7 Eleven. Now, what's sherbet? Sherbet, you, you, that's not even in the same realm. That's it, like a powder, man. It is. No, no, it's no, not. no. You're thinking of something else. I'm literally not. Sherbet is a powder. There's, I guess there's a. <laughs> okay, look, guys, <laughs> the point is anything, it, like, uh, that's just fucking. It's like when vegans try and make their own meat. <laughs> Don't even fucking try and make your own thing. Sherbet is defined as a frozen product containing one or more dairy products. <laughs> so anything's sherbet. So if you if you put fucking chocolate in the freezer, that's <laughs> sherbet now. Ice cream is sherbet, yeah. gelato sherbet. So you know what? I like some forms of sherbet. <laughs> yeah. And I hate other forms. Um, right. Now, look. Today is the day where social media is at its most insufferable, where everyone is posting their Spotify wrapped and pretending that other people care, myself included. I have posted my wrapped and I got to say, I look, I don't always post my wrapped, but I will say this. I think that mine is particularly embarrassing. I don't know. I used to, I used to think that I have good music taste. I've accepted now that I don't have terrible music taste. I have funny music taste where people will look at what I listen to and go, that's fucking strange as my top songs, right? Number one, winner by cursor banger, stand by it. 108 total streams. And I think that at least 30 of those streams was a particularly long shower. I had one day a few months ago. Number two, Don't Panic by Coldplay. Number three, Shiver, also by Coldplay. Number four, Spies, also by Coldplay. Number five, Ugly by Russ and Lil Baby. What the fuck is this? What ty- I don't even know what to call this type of music. Uh, I don't know what taste this is. I would call it tasteless. And, uh, but I will stand by it. If you're not listening to a healthy mix of only Coldplay and Cursor, I mean, you're having a shit day. Spotify described my music taste as uh, the two most listened types of things is chill and hectic. And those are my only two moods is I'm going to relax. I want to listen to someone talk about fights and stabbing. That's it. Those are the two things that relax me. Keelan... Yours was particularly rubbish. Why? Because the Because the only thing you listen to is about four songs by fucking Lime Cordial. Okay. Can I read off my top artists? Yeah, all right. 
Lime Cordial, Split Ends, <laughs> Teenage Dads, which is just yeah. cheap Lime Cordial, yeah. and Green Day. Green Day. <laughs> Man. See, but I don't think anyone has, has – I don't think – honestly – all, all that I've realized looking at Spotify rap, no one has, there's no such thing as good music taste. Mm. Everyone's pathetic because it's not like no one is posting about what they actually listen to for the most part when all these music buffs, all these people that I follow that like think they're very deep people, right? My girlfriend included, she thinks she's a very deep person. She listens to Halsey, all right? Wow, one of the most popular female <laughs> artists in the world. How unique, right? Rosie <laughs> is the only person I know that is just out loud and proud. I love garbage. <laughs> Her most listened to artist was Lil Nas X, right? Who's not a bad artist, but he's definitely not like, wow, what a deep person you are. Oh All God. the guy talks about is fucking and sucking and talk, good on him. Talk about when we were in Queensland during his album release. Oh man. The, I reckon for three months while we were in Tassie in the lead up, to Lil Nas X album coming up every day, Rosie would give us an update of like, guys, guess how many days there is until Lil Nas X's album drops? And we go, gee, I don't know, how, maybe one less since yesterday. She's like, man, how did you know? I hope you know that the day Lil Nas X album comes out, that's all we're gonna listen to. And we're like, all right. And then every single day, three times a day, she would give us an update of how many times we're going to listen to the Lil Nas X album. And we'd be like, yes, we know. And, sh and, then, and then it finally comes out. Listen to it once. But also, <laughs> she wasn't saying Lil Nas X. She, didn't know, she was mispronouncing it for like weeks. And, and no one corrected her either, <laughs> which is great. <laughs> Little Nays. <laughs> I hope you guys know that when Lil Nays <laughs> drops his album... We're going to be listening to it all day. And I'd be like, who the fuck is Little Nate? Sounds like a little nasal spray. <laughs> so I don't think anyone has good music taste at all, ever, right? And, I, and also, there's a lot of people that somehow managed to make this show their most listened uh, show. And that just must mean they, they don't listen to any other podcast. Because this show this year has come out so sporadically that any other podcast on earth, even if you listen to like five episodes, you would listen to more than this. So thank you very much to all of the people who listened to this show this year, despite how uh, little it actually was released. Next year is going to be completely different. Three asterisks. I've had a terrible weekend. All I've done, all I've done all weekend is just sit in pain. I've had the worst fucking ear infection I've ever had in my life. I, I was sick for a week and then I was just in pain for a week. And every day I wake up and my brain feels like it's going to explode. Which, you know the type of pain where just anything could piss you off? You know where you just get angry and you don't like who you are? That's who I've been all weekend. All week, I'm just sitting there. Oh, there was one day in particular where I was in so much pain where I was just holding my head, two hands on the left side of my head, and I was just moaning. Because uh, <laughs> it just made me feel better to complain. I'll say this. No one gets sick like men. We are the world reigning champions of getting sick. When women get sick, they have a little cold. They wear a dressing gown. They look after themselves. When men get sick, it's the end of the world and the entire house must cater to their needs. That's the type of sick I respect. Don't, don't, don't fucking have be woman sick where you go, oh, I feel, I feel a cold coming on and you catch it early and you heal yourself with the power of self-care. What I want is the type of sick I can respect, a great man sick where you've been getting sick for the last two weeks and you go, I don't have time for that. I'm going to ignore it. And you push through the part where you should listen to your body because you have better shit to do or much less important things to do like a podcast and then you just push through it until your body goes you know what man i've been telling you to rest for like three weeks and you've been ignoring me so what i'm gonna do is hit you with the world's worst ear infection a real punch in the temple and you're gonna be fucked for five days and i'm gonna take you out because that's what you deserve and that's man sick 
where you've ignored the needs of your body for so long that you just get so sick that you can't even open your eyes without getting a migraine. That's the type of sick that I can respect, okay? So don't don't come at me with look after your body and listen to what your body needs. I'll I'll listen when they when it takes my legs out from under me. That's when I'll be like, "All right, maybe I should have a little rest." That's man sick. No one gets sick like men. World reigning champions of becoming sick. I've, yeah, I was, uh, I had to do like a, a remote doctor session, which by the way is fucking another amazing thing about COVID is you don't have to leave the house for fucking anything. A lot of people don't even have to leave the house to go to work now. It's really cool. You can do everything remote. I was watching a TikTok of a sex worker working remotely. What? I know. Just like... Just like webcam or Zoom. There was a there was a TikTok right of a girl right. She's a sex worker and uh, her thing is uh, she humiliates people. Bitch doesn't even have to leave her house. I couldn't think of anything more humiliating than paying a sex worker to attend to me via Zoom. If you're really into getting degraded, there's nothing more degrading than yeah. I'm I don't do visits. <laughs> I've got 20 minutes over Zoom with a bad inter- internet connection. I watched a TikTok, and how fucked is the double standards of TikTok of their community guidelines? I will get I will get videos taken down and restricted because I say uh, I say a joke that's too edgy. When and that's that annoys me because I watched this woman upload a three minute video of just her face and the audio of one of her male clients punching himself in the testicles as hard as he could and screeching in pain. It was horrible. It sounded like, you know, when you slap, when, when you slap uncooked chicken on a, on the bench, it sounded like that. Like, Oh, oh, ow. And she was just sitting there watching it really unimpressed. <laughs> and and it went crazy viral, right? And then all of these people are like, oh man, this is like a job you can do? She's like, yeah, I'm kind of like a financial dominatrix. And then of course, the number one question from all of these people is like, how much are you getting paid for this? And she does a follow-up and I'm like, well, I have to watch the follow-up. Where I need to find out how much money this woman's making. Uh, and she she reveals like, oh yeah, I got paid $15 for this. I mean, do something. Raise your prices. I I charge more for a fucking cameo. Like $15 to watch someone assault their testicles with their fist? That's a $1,500 thing. I wouldn't do that for anything less than two grand. Really. I mean, are you a financial dominatrix if someone who works at McDonald's can afford you? I don't think so. Or maybe, maybe if you were like, if you, if your clients were exclusively from the third world, that's pretty financial dominatrix. But I feel like you're not a financial dominatrix un- until your client finishes a session and goes, shit, I can't afford the lunch. That's really what you want to be, right? So anyway, that's the one good thing about remote everything is you don't have to leave your house for anything. I get a doctor's appointment, but here's the problem. Just like, remember, remember when they bought smart whiteboards and laptops into high schools and that was really cool and a real forward way of thinking because the school system knew that technology was the future so we need to integrate it into the classrooms? That was a really cool idea until you gave all of this technology to horny 15-year-olds that are only going to use it for porn and then 50-year-old people who hate their jobs who don't want to understand how it works and miss the blackboard. They're like, fuck, I just got used to a regular whiteboard. Now I need a fucking smart one. This is terrible, right? So I do remote doctor appointments. I set that up because I can't leave the house. That's how much pain I'm in. And I sit on hold for like 40 minutes. And then this lovely woman answers and I'm like, oh, this woman is so nice. She starts talking to me. She goes, how are you doing? I'm like, oh, I'm doing really badly. I'm doing really poorly. I'm in, I'm in a lot of pain. And she goes, oh, that's terrible to hear. Why don't you tell me a little bit about the situation? I'm like, oh, my head hurts so much. Uh, I can't sleep. Uh, I keep waking up. I'm really like upset and irritable because of it. And I'm just not doing well because of that. And she goes, oh, no. That's awful to hear. I'm really sorry to hear that. And she's being really like 
overly nice. And then she goes, why don't you tell me a little bit about yourself and what you've been up to recently? And I'm like, uh, <laughs> I'm a comedian. Uh, I haven't been doing too much because I've just been lying in bed. She goes, you've just been in bed. You haven't been able to get out of bed. I'm like, no, I can't get out of bed. And she goes, oh, okay. Is there anything that's like happening at home that's making you feel like this? And I'm like, uh, I mean, I have an ear and I've got an ear infection. She goes, oh, okay. You've got an ear infection here. Yeah, that must make things harder for you. I'm like, yeah, I'd say that's the number one problem. She goes, oh, okay. Like, what are the, what are the other problems? Like, do you have any family problems? And I'm like, uh, I don't know. I don't have any family problems. It's mainly just this, this ear infection. I think I might need antibiotics. And she goes, yeah, you might need antibiotics. And then she keeps asking me all these like weirdly personal questions. And then I keep going back to the ear. I'm like, yeah, okay, this is really nice. I'm having a lovely chat with this woman, but I keep going back to my ear. And then, and then I go, uh, are you, I'm sorry. Are you able to like help me with my ear problem? And she goes, uh, Lewis, I, th I think you've accidentally booked a therapy session. <laughs> and, I, and I was like, oh, that's why this woman was wasting my time. I, th I thought I'd booked a fucking doctor's appointment. She goes, yeah, Lewis, you're, this is therapy. I'm like, oh, fuck. That's why this doctor is the nicest doctor I've ever talked to. She goes, yeah, yeah. I, I, what I'm going to do is I'm not going to charge you for this session. I'm going to refund you the money, but I hope that your ear gets better. I'm like, oh, okay. <laughs> I accidentally went through therapy. And by the way, my mood has lifted. <laughs> Bit of surprise therapy for me. So I ended up getting to a doctor and I finally got a really grumpy Indian guy that didn't speak English well. I'm like, thank God, this is what I wanted. And I got antibiotics and I'm feeling a lot better. So, you know, my ear hurts less and my mood's been elevated. The power of doctor, doctors and therapy. I'm, I'm really doing well. <laughs> um, so speaking of doing well, guys, it's time to talk about the sponsor of the show, manscaped.com the best ball trimmer in the game. If there's any personal groomer I can recommend, it's the Lawnmower 4.0 sold by manscaped.com. Use code SPEARS for 20% off and free shipping. The best ball bag trimmer in the game. I miss mine dearly. I've left mine in Tasmania. I go back uh, December 15. I can't wait. December 15, I'm going to have a long shower. Cannot wait. I'm disheveled. I really miss it. You see my beard? That's also why my beard's looking really dirty because I don't have my Manscaped shaver, which is also great for your face. Really good stuff, Keelan. You've got yours. No, mine's in Canberra. You left yours in Canberra? Yeah. Dude. But can I tell you a little story about this morning? Yeah. This is very gross. Sorry, Rosie. Um, I shaved my face with a normal razor. Yeah. And then I got in the shower and I was like, my balls are hairy. Yeah. I'm going to shave my sack. You fool. And Don't, guess what? With the handheld razor. Yep. Man, you're an idiot. And then. How could you do this? The shower looked like a bloody mess. Oh, <laughs> man. <laughs> Sorry. Come Rosie. on, dude. <laughs> but with Manscaped, that never happened. <laughs> and there you go manscaped.com you're literally listening to it i would say that this is even better advertising than me telling you how good it is to use the shaver i'm telling me and keelan are telling you the reality of living without one it's bad you're either you got to choose between being very disheveled or just cut the fuck up <laughs> it's really not good get yourself a manscaped lawnmower 4.0 the best ball bag trimmer in the game manscaped.com use code spears for 20 percent off and free shipping don't live like us it's not good learn from our mistakes get one and for the love of god don't fucking leave it in a different state so what are you going to do now i have to wait for phoebe to move home Oh, man. Move back to Melbourne, I mean. Right. Uh, when does that happen? Three or four weeks. Three or four weeks. So either she's going to come home to like some like wildebeest or some some self-harm hog. Well, the good thing is that women can use the Manscaped 4.0 as well. That's true. So maybe she can Manscape her woman parts. That's true. We'll <laughs> Manscaped, right? Yeah. They don't discriminate. No, it actually is a good trimmer as well for women, I've heard. Um, so manscaped.com, use code SPEARS, 20% off and free shipping. Support the brands that support the show, man. Do that shit. Um, what else do I want to talk about here? Oh, yes. Uh, the uh, the Ghislaine Maxwell trial is underway. It's officially started. And uh, look, 
I, I'm interested to see how this thing's going to go. It already looks dirty and weird. So the prosecutor who's supposed to be prosecuting Ghislaine Maxwell is the same person who lost the footage of uh, Epstein's cell after he killed himself. And it's the same person who lost that footage. I feel like if you lose security camera footage of like the most significant event in recent like uh, sex trafficking crime history, if you lose footage of the star, not even the star witness, of the guy killing himself, you lose the footage of the cell, you're not a prosecutor on anything remotely similar anymore. But this woman is. I don't like that. But what's real interesting is a lot of look, a lot of people are saying, oh, mainstream media aren't reporting on this. They actually are. I for the most part I've seen I've actually seen a lot of news articles about it. What I'm also what I am seeing though is social media uh platforms seem to be almost suppressing discussion about it and i feel like it's probably because they can't really the algorithms okay worst case scenario they're maliciously you know trying to stop discussion of it best case scenario the algorithm can't tell the difference between actual news about this case and then crazy conspiracy stuff about sex trafficking and celebrities as well um which you know is, is looking less and less crazy every fucking day how's this headline Ghislaine Maxwell accuser says she met Trump at 14 and flew with Prince Andrew. By the way, uh, one of uh, the biggest accusers of Prince Andrew is not being included in this trial at all for some reason. But the first accuser in Ghislaine Maxwell's child sex trafficking trial testified on Wednesday that Jeffrey Epstein introduced her to Donald Trump when she was 14. The accuser also claimed that she was on a flight with Prince Andrew. Now, she doesn't accuse Trump or the Duke of York of any misconduct, but very fucking strange that she met Prince Andrew on a flight. The Trump one is less... Bad, I think, if you look at the... I've looking, been looking at a lot of this shit, but basically Epstein took him to Trump's Mar-a-Lago when, he, when, he when she was 14 and was introduced uh, to Trump. But Trump ended up banning Epstein from those resorts because of shit like this. So I don't know if this is bad. It's probably bad. I don't know. I, it's, I feel like the, the news is definitely really, really trying as hard as I can to rope Trump into this stuff, and it just doesn't look like he's as involved as they want him to be. Um, but they are kind of ignoring all of the other stuff. So Prince Andrew was on a flight with Epstein and a 14-year-old girl. Fuck this guy. Real dirty. And then this girl who is, using a, is not being named by her real name, which is good, um, is basically accusing Ghislaine and Epstein of like actually uh, doing shit to her and being involved with all of the sex trafficking, which is uh, really, I guess, good that this stuff is actually coming out now, but also it really points to the fact that this woman was so involved, right, where all of these other articles, this is a great article that I saw, um, by Bloomberg. This one's really good. Um, let me have a look. I'm pulling this one up. It's, it, I saw it and I want to read it word for word because it's such a great uh, headline. Glenn Maxwell, Bloomberg. Okay. This is really great. Um, okay. I can't speak when I'm fucking typing. Uh, all right. Okay, here we go. All right, here's the headline. <clears throat> Ghislaine Maxwell's sex trafficking trial is set to be one of the biggest of the Me Too era. Firstly, this isn't Me Too. This is not a Me Too. This isn't like uh, getting sexually harassed at work or trading sexual favors for opportunities. This isn't film industry bullshit. This is like global international child sex trafficking. This isn't, this is its own thing. Don't lump this in with me too. This is worse, right? Uh, but 
The jury may have to grapple with a unique question. Is Maxwell herself a victim? And that's from Bloomberg, right? And then all of the replies to this headline are just photos of Bloomberg and Ghislaine Maxwell hanging out, which is great. So I don't know. I, I just think that they're trying to pose. I think with Epstein being almost definitely killed, and then Ghislaine being the only person left, it's a lot easier for all these powers that be that are almost definitely involved in some form with this shit to be like, oh, Ghislaine was a victim too. And finally, the big bad guy's dead, and now it's just Ghislaine who was roped into it, And but it was mainly him, and let's just let this story die. I think that's the preferred outcome for these people, but hopefully that's not going to happen. I did mention this uh, Twitter account, the, Gale- the Maxwell uh, trial tracker. It's still up and they're actually doing a pretty good job of tracking like moments in the trial, but they are also, I would take it with a grain of salt. They are also trying to make money out of like paid fucking um, email subscriptions, like uh, mailing list type stuff. So I take that with a grain of salt as well. They are trying to run a business, which is great, you know? What a great service. I wonder if I can make, ah, the the worst uh, global sex trafficking ring in history. I wonder if there's any money in this. (laughs) Um, So I'm going to, I'm going to keep talking about it. It's a very, very early days, but it is really cool seeing um, that something is seeming to happen about this, but we'll see if any powerful people actually get roped up in this thing. I think that's the, the scariest thing is like so many people are involved with it and so many names are like floating around. We'll see how many of these people actually get criminally charged with this type of stuff. It sounds like fucking no one will other than her. She'll take the fall, he's dead, and then they'll be like, oh, problem solved, all done. And then everyone will breathe a sigh of relief. Um, so, uh, uh, let's do that next episode because I want to spend some time on that. Keelan's robbed me. We'll talk about that next week. Uh, let's do a miscellaneous bit at the end. Guys, email me at podcast at com if you need any life advice, if you have a funny story you think I would enjoy, a tale from your youth or anything like that, even a news story you'd like me to, to talk about that you think would be interesting or funny, send it through to podcast at com. Oh, man, I have absolutely heaps of emails now. Thank you very much. That's awesome. All right. Let's go with this one. Uh, Is my girlfriend cheating on me? By uh, Brad. Hey, Lewis, my name is Brad. My girlfriend and I have been together for four years. And on a normal night out, she came out to me as pansexual and says she is more attracted to, to more attracted to who people are as opposed to a specific gender. Uh, I couldn't give a fuck and I love her all the same. Cool. However, on the same night, as well as on one a few weeks prior, she'd made comments about me making out with a female friend of ours who was out with us. Not sure of her orientation, but she's in a hetero relationship of a similar duration. Right. So she's kind of raising the idea of you kissing another woman. Interesting. I'm not really sure how to feel about it. I mean, I've kissed a few of the boys when absolutely legless and thought, uh, oh, wait, she's talking about maybe her kissing a girl, not you. Okay, okay, I've read that wrong. Um, I'm not really sure how I feel about it. I mean, I've kissed a few of the boys when absolutely legless and thought nothing of it and was applying the same to what she told me until she came out too because I feel like attraction plays a big part in the difference between cheating and just being drunk and dumb. What do you think? Um, Also, I don't need to wait for your new chin for it to be over for me as my girl is already obsessed with Jasmine and raves about her beauty to me whenever she uploads a new selfie. Maybe I should have realized she wasn't straight before now. Have a shit one. Yeah, tough luck, Brad. My girlfriend's going to steal your girlfriend. (laughs) Um, I mean, I don't think she's cheating on you. I think... I wouldn't say that at all. I think that, um, I mean, dude, it might sound like she's trying to set up a threesome uh, is what that sounds like to me. In fact, I would honestly say that it's uh, good that she's spoken to you about this so openly 
Because if she was cheating on you, she just would, I, I would assume she just would never say that type of stuff at all. Her saying that shit means that she's comfortable with you and knows that you trust her and also trusts you. So she can talk about other attractive people. Um, I would say that, yeah, she's made comments to me about making out with a female friend of ours. I don't know what that means. Does that mean that she's talked about wanting to do it or talking about doing it? She's made comments to me about making out with a female friend of ours. I mean, that could mean either. Okay, so if it if she has made out with female friends, I mean, yeah, that is cheating. But then also you've done that with the boy. I don't know. That's a fuck. You guys have a strange relationship where you're out there kissing boys, but nah, it's not cheating because I'm not gay. Mate, you're kissing boys. That's about as gay as it gets. There's only one step before it gets more gay. If you're kissing other people and your partner doesn't know, that is cheating. I don't know what to tell you. Um, yeah, dude, uh, this seems messy. I'm going to need clarity on this because if she's talking about the idea of making out with another person, no, she might be trying to set up a threesome or she might be trying to gauge whether or not you'd be okay with her going outside the relationship, which isn't cheating but also is something that you would have to have a very strong stance on one way or the other. You know, if you're okay with it, you need to be fucking okay with it. If you're not, you need to make that very clear and be like, hey man, you can't go outside our relationship. If you do, it's over. And if you want to do it, you should find someone else. If she is making out with other people, then I mean, yeah, just because it's a, it's a girl doesn't mean that it's not cheating. Uh, Yes. If she's actually done it, yes. If she hasn't done it, uh, no. And I would think that's actually a, quite a good thing that she's talking to you about it and being open about it because it enables you to have a discussion about it and be like, all right, well, maybe is this something that we should both do together? Uh, or is this something that maybe the, this is not going to work with our relationship? We should end it. Those are both like good long-term things because if it's not good, you can find someone that it works for and so can she. Uh, but yeah, I, I think that no, she's not, unless she did kiss on another person, then yes. Uh, but then also, so are you. So you're both as bad as each other. Um, either way, uh, me and jazz will drop her off at six. <laughs> um, all right. What else do we have? Um, here we go. After two years, I finally found out she likes me help. Uh, dear Lewis, I recently found out through text from one of my friends that the girl I've been crushing on likes me. I met the girl in question two years ago and I kind of fell in love at first sight. Uh, over two years, I've debated whether it was just a small crush or something bigger. I've watched myself and my taste changed, but also her, the way she talks, dresses and styles her hair. I want to tell her, but I don't know how. Would it be weird if I told her that I've liked her all the time we've been friends and I'm scared... Uh, I'm scared it will freak her out. Over the two years, I've never fallen for someone else. I had one small crush on this guy, but only because he looked exactly like the girl. At Man, is everyone pan now? What's going on? Um, am I crazy? I'm not 100% sure if she really likes me, but we text every few nights and we hang out lots. Please give me some advice because I'm stuck, Sam. Um, I mean, yeah, dude, you gotta, you gotta tell her. If you don't, if you don't make your feelings clear, you're never going to get anywhere and you'll be stuck in the friend zone for all eternity. And then you'll, you'll both just be in this weird semi friendship where there's this tension that is never addressed. So you're not really friends, but you're definitely not dating. So your feelings are just going to get hurt. If you like someone as the man, it's your responsibility to go, Hey, I like you more than a friend. I want to turn this into a rela relationship. What do you think? A girl is not going to do that. A girl doesn't, uh, for the most part, women do not hit on you. They put themselves in a position for you to hit on them. That's how it works. They they don't go out of their way to chase you. They just take the wall down and it's up to you to cross the line. And then they go, all right, cool. Because if you're not going to show the initiative, why the fuck would she be interested in you? If you're not going to go, hey, I like you, why would she uh, do it for you? That, you know, that is your job as the dude to go, hey, these are my intentions. Let's make this real. If you don't do that, 
you'll be like this for another five years. Uh, all you got to do, it's not, it's honestly, you're building it up in your head too much. It's not a big deal. All you got to do is get her alone, go out, do something, uh, have some food or, or whatever and go, Hey, I, uh, I really like you and I have for a long time. I want to be more than friends. Uh, what do you think? And it's a bit scary and it's nerve wracking, but at the end of the day, it's harmless and only good can come of it because, you know, worst case scenario, she's like, oh, I don't feel that way at all. Uh, and you can go back to being friends or you can end the friendship if you can't get over your feelings. Best case scenario, you're now no longer friends you're dating. And it sounds like she likes you back. So I, would, I wouldn't think this is a no brainer, dude. Just go for a walk. Don't text her. Don't call her. That's pussy shit. Be a man and go, hey, uh, I I actually really like you uh, and I want to be more than friends. What do you think? And she'll say yes, obviously, because you find out, you found out that she likes you. So yeah, that's, that's what I would say is just, you know, go ball out, do it. Don't be, don't be a little girl about it. She's never going to make that move because that's not generally for the most part, what women do. You need to step up and, you know, go, hey, I like you as more than a friend. I want to make this more than, than than what we have right now. What do you think? And then if she goes, yes, then you follow it up with, cool. Well, let's go out and do this activity and let's call it a date. That's, that's, that's what I would recommend is have the follow-up ready to go in your back pocket, right? So do you know what you're going to do if she says yes, which she will from the sounds of it. Go, hey, I like you more as friends. I want to make this something more. She'll go yes, and then you go, and this is where you like really, really impress the fuck out of her. You go, great. I was hoping you would say yes because I have tickets to this thing that we both like, or I was thinking we could go out to this nature thing if she's that type of person, or maybe we can go and get dinner here if she's a food person. You know who she is, right? So have the, the, the plan ready to go, and then that'll really seal the deal is if you go, I want to be more than friends, she says yes, and you go, cool, let's go and enjoy this mutual interest, but let's call it a date. And then that'll be the real like uh, tone shift of like, oh, we're not doing this as friends. We're going to do it as a date. But you have to say that. Let's go and do this thing, but this time let's do it as a date and see how it goes. And then you can do that as a date and you see how it goes. And if it goes well, great. And if it doesn't go well, cool. Also, you can still... Uh, move on. I would say actually though, if you have feelings for her and uh, it's not reciprocated, it's not going to be a good friendship because you're just going to get your feelings hurt when she moves on or when you do weird, strange things and it's just muddy and messy and weird. Okay. That's my advice. Go for it. Uh, that's the end of the show. Thank you very much for listening. I'm going to be back next Sunday. If you want more podcast, jump on Patreon right now. The episode is up right now on Patreon uh, and you get access to the Discord server as well. If you want extra podcasts, you want to join the community, you want to join the gang, support me on Patreon. Um, and I will talk to you guys next Sunday. I hope you have a shit one. Bye. <laughs>